Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here, and I'm gonna talk about your gut health while traveling. What to do to help your digestive system while you're traveling. Um, I'm gonna mention a couple different types of travel. I'm doing this video because I had a lot of conversations around this while I was just traveling. This is the first time I've really traveled uh, in over a year, right? Like been on a plane, those things, yeah, yeah, right? I did a, a talk there's a conference, conference, seminar, thing, event. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. It was in Florida. I'm in Minnesota. And uh, yeah, I get pretty airsick. There's turbulence. If there's not turbulence, I do okay. But if there's turbulence, I'm literally like the person you do not want to sit next to because I have to do like deep breathing and like calm. And I'm like, like choking back dry peeves. Like... I like I'm for sure on somebody's like snapchat or something like check this girl out we're just like timing it down until she hurls yeah it's not good it's not a good time <laughs> I like being in different places I don't like getting there um, so I have a hard time with this I have a real hard time with this and I have to have very specific things um, oh I almost forgot one of my favorite things so I'm gonna add on here too um, these are just little things Yep, those sa these saved my ass uh, this past weekend. So and my flight back was pretty rough. It, like we like got changed, changed planes, all these things. So it was like almost three in the morning when I got back. And if you have not seen my Instagram stories, H was making pancakes for people. So of course I get back at three in the morning for the pancakes that were last yesterday. They're still on the counter, right? Of course. And it's a very phallic looking pancake. And I was like, What's this? What is what's this? Like, am I just like delusional because I'm so tired? Or <laughs> so my Instagram stories, if you haven't seen them today, they're they're hilarious. Um. Anyway, but when we talk about gut health and we talk about some of these things, one of the things that can be really frustrating is that if you already have gut issues and then you want to travel or do things or something, right? It makes it ten times worse. It makes it ten times worse because it's that much more stress and pressure on your system. It really, really is. So I'm gonna go through and talk about this. Now, sometimes people can have uh, these issues. I'm gonna, these are suggestions. I'm just throwing out suggestions to try um, that type of a thing. And for those of you looking at this one, we'll talk about it, okay? We'll talk about it. This isn't for everybody. And there's a different combination of things that I do depending on what I have going on that I've had to learn to navigate with my own system. And sometimes even if I do everything right, I still don't feel good. So giving yourself the time, a buffer zone also is really helpful. Um, yes. So gut health while traveling, all these other things. Again, if you have digestive issues to start with, this is hard to navigate. So if you're looking at doing any GI mapping or looking at really getting a custom protocol, I'm going to put a link in here to learn more about the one-to-one -one level program that I have. Everything it was a Dutch test, GI mapping, all these things. We look at everything in your body in detail. So there's that information there in the comments. But a lot of times if you're traveling by plane, train, automobile, it's a really old movie. Um, flying, you know, you're exposed to different type of radiation when you fly, um, the turbulence and everything. Um, there's a lot of different stressors that happen with flying than, and then it does with driving. Driving, depending on how long you're driving, if you're driving for eight hours or 10 hours or something like that, there's a constant low level vibration that goes through your body too. These things can disrupt your digestive system. It can slow things down. You can become constipated for a day. So make sure you're doing all these things to take care of your body so that, you know, before, during, and after your trip so that things move smoothly. Nothing is worse than going somewhere for a weekend and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do all these things. And then you get there and you're constipated the entire time. It's awful, it's awful. So a few key tips, make sure you are up on your probiotics and bringing probiotics with you. Take them on an empty stomach if you need to, to make sure you're getting all that good bacteria in there. Enzymes, take digestive enzymes when you eat. Oftentimes when you're eating foods that are not regular foods for you, right? Like regular normal foods, foods that you commonly eat. Your system gets used to foods that you commonly eat. So if all of a sudden you're, you go on vacation for four days even, and you're eating all these different types of foods and so they're, you know, prepped in a restaurant. Restaurant food is different than food cooked at home because there's a lot of, 
you know, salt and butter and all these other things added that you might not add at home, that it, your body has to process that and it can be really different for your system. So enzymes, kombucha. I always get kombucha on the go. Um, this is a fantastic way to help your system just up level and, and process all the things. Charcoal, this is my secret. And for those of you that have heard my charcoal story about getting stopped at the Canadian Customs, I get really nervous in front of authority figures. I'd be a terrible criminal. I would, if you wanna rob a bank, don't call me, I'm not your girl. You know, I just, I get so nervous. I'm like, oh my God, he found charcoal in my bag and was like, what is this? What is this doing? I was like, oh my God, it's just, it's charcoal. It's really helpful when you get bloated and gassy and you know, it just really helps call me. And he was like, oh, and then I was like, oh my God, I'm telling a customs officer about me being bloated and gassy and when I travel and, and all about my digestive bloat and gas. And I kept talking about it. And I couldn't stop myself because I was like sweating, so nervous. It was awful. I still take my charcoal with me because it works. I take it at night before I go to bed. It helps calm my system down. I will take it sometimes if I'm going out to eat and I'm worried about being um, exposed to foods or cross-contamination because I am uh, gluten-free. I cannot have any other foods with gluten in it. So that's a really big thing for me. Otherwise, I will get sick on a trip and that is the worst too. So this helps save my stomach and help, helps bring things back around. Daily intermittent fasting. I will incorporate some daily intermittent fasting, give myself a specific feed window of about eight hours just to make sure I'm not eating too early, too late, and just having my gut be too active because having more rest time for my gut is helpful. This is nothing to do with weight loss or anything for me. This is literally about the more hours my gut gets to rest, the better. I feel better. Um, no alcohol, I, especially while I'm traveling. If I'm there, fine but I, I don't drink before getting on a plane or on a plane. That's never worked out well for me. So lesson learned. <laughs> it's hard in your system. It's, it's you know forcing your liver to do a lot more work and if your digestive system is already being taxed and you already have a hard time adding this in, it, it makes it worse. It's putting gas on a fire. Hydrating, make sure you hydrate a ton. Not just water, get electrolytes in, get minerals in. That's gonna help your system upload that hydration and soothe things and feel and make it feel better. And little things like ginger chews. Ginger's very soothing on, the, on your stomach. So when I really was having a hard time and like felt like I was gonna dry heave, I could suck on a ginger chew, a ginger candy, and it really helped to calm things down. Um, some people do Dramamine. I get sick from Dramamine, so I can't take that. Um, but there's also acupressure points. Sometimes people do, like there's wristbands that you can wear. Um, you know, that, that put a pr pressure on this point right here, which is an acupressure point. So basically how to find it again, I'm certified in Eastern medicine and acupuncture. So super easy, three fingers right here. It's right below where that third finger is right between like the two tendons here. I'm so white that you can see all my veins <laughs> right here. Right. And you can, either, you can even press this. Like some people wear like the wristbands, great, but you, even if you're flying, like you can just press this. And if you can do both hands at once, great. But even just doing one and then the other, you don't need to dig. You don't need to be like, oh my God. no, 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 bring it down, no. Just some light sustained pressure for a little bit. You know, count to 20, switch, count to 20. And that oftentimes really helps take down um, you know, nauseousness, gut issues, things like that when you're traveling. Um, so that's, that's a really helpful key thing there. Both sides, again, same way to find it right there. And that's where you press. I don't like to press with that finger though. It's just more comfortable to kind of rest my hand here and just press. And then also you don't look like such a weirdo on a flight. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, if you have digestive issues already, right? If you're like, yeah, I, I get bloated every time I eat or I, I'm, I'm chronically constipated anyway, this can be 10 times worse when you wanna travel. So that's why, again, go in the comments there and learn more about the one-to-one -one program where we do GI mapping and actually look at the bacterial balance in your system. See exactly what your body's doing so we know how to target it specifically. That way there's no guessing. That way there's no like, oh, I hope this is gonna work, right? These are a lot of examples and things that have worked for me and that work for a lot of women that I work with. But if you try something and you're like, oh, that was terrible. I'm not gonna do that again. Okay, fine, yeah, great. 
not everything <laughs> works for everybody. So if you haven't tried something, try it, right? But again, if you're looking for more answers, that's where go in the comments, um, you know, and learn more about working with me one-on-one. -on -one. Other resources I have for you, I have, uh, cause we talk about nutrition for women's health, women's hormones, all the things. I booked the female fat solution. This is on Amazon talking all about how to eat for your hormones and your cycle. If you don't have a cycle, boom, female menopause solution. Also on Amazon there. My podcast is called The Female Health Solution, and then my YouTube channel is called Dr. Beth Wessey, where you can stay updated on all the videos I have coming out. Now, if you have a question, if you want me to do a deep dive on something, if you have something specific about the gut, do not hesitate to reach out and ask me. You can either put a comment below. If you're not comfortable putting a comment, feel free to reach out to me separately. You know, send me an email, send me a message, uh, because a lot of people have questions, or, and they're like, is this normal? I feel like a, I feel like a weirdo. You're not a weirdo. I've, I guarantee I've heard it before. And there's a lot of people who have issues with stuff and you just feel so isolated so you don't talk about it that much because sometimes it's hard to figure out. You're like, well, I did this last time and it was great, but now it's not working. What the heck? Yeah, that's where we come, well, that's where learning more about your body and system comes into play. So that's what I got for you guys tonight. Let me know if you have any other questions and I will see you later.